What is money for? Is it a helpful resource to use for good? Or is the love of it the root of all evil? Actually, it's both. But God may have a different definition of success. Real success doesn't come overnight. It takes hard work and faithful planning. To use your dollars well, it takes more than a little sense. Welcome to Dollars and Cents. I'm Yvonne Lewis, co-host for this program, and the primary host is Ryan Mack, our financial literacy expert, who has been teaching us so much stuff. Hey, Ryan. Having a great time doing it. Oh, man, this is, this is so, this is exciting to me. Because mm -hmm. anytime I learn something new, I get excited. Because mm -hmm. it's just, and I know you're learning. I know you're learning new stuff. So we are going to be talking today about credit. Credit, yes. And that's super, super important because so many people have bad credit. Right, and I think it's, it's more important than what people realize in this day, in this, this particular economy, and we'll, We'll explain why. And first, I want to just let, let people know what the scripture says. Yes. About Good. credit. Good. And this is, now, this is something that there's no question that they actually took the law, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and they devised the law based on actual scripture. And I'm going to show you here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first scripture is just one that I like to, uh, from Psalm 37 and 21. Uh, the wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. Mm. And so, uh, obviously, um, credit does just that. It, it analyzes the Fair, the fair Isaac Corporation, Corporation. They analyze, uh, and we'll talk about who is, what is FICO mean? What, who, who, who is the Fair Isaac Corporation? But they want to figure out who's righteous mm. and who pays back. Mm. And the goal of credit is really, is, it, the, the credit score is almost a measure of your righteousness, mm. right? And it's from 350 to 850. And it really says, okay, well, the higher your score, the more righteous you are, so the more prone you are to pay back, so the more easy it is to get a loan. Mm. So now, now check, I'm gonna read the, the, uh, a piece of the Fair Credit Reporting Act first. Mm -hmm. Now, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, FCRA, it says this that most negative items must be removed from your credit report seven years from the first date of delinquency. Some exceptions to the seven year rule include chapter seven bankruptcy filings, judgments, money owed to or guaranteed by the government. So there are some exceptions, but the important part of that is it says uh, most negative items must be removed. Negative items meaning things you owe. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Most negative items must be removed from your credit report seven years from the first date of delinquency. Now, let's go on over to Deuteronomy 15, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. OK, so Deuteronomy 15, 1 and 2 says at the end of every seven years, thou shall make a release. And this is a manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth ought unto his neighbor shall release it. Hmm. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Hmm. So literally, Deuteronomy 15, 1 and 2 is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Wow. This is where they derived the law from, from the, from the word of Christ. So this is, Many times individuals will say, well, it's derived. No, no, this is the actual law. Mm -hmm. And it's the law of the, it's the Lord's law, the Lord's release. It is the law that derives our law. Isn't that interesting how there are so many, like if you look at the constitution, mm -hmm. um, the constitution is based on the law exactly. of God. Yeah. It's really interesting, even though that, I don't know that they necessarily intended for it to be like that, per se, because they weren't necessarily Christian, even mm -hmm. though people think they were. But mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that, you know, God's law is, as we've said before, right. you've said on this program, timeless. Right. And this, this law applies, this word here in Deuteronomy applies to the law. Exactly. And, it's, and, and the other thing that you mentioned, I think we should expand on that a bit, is the integrity of a person yeah. is bound into, if you say you're gonna, if you buy right. something with credit, mm -hmm. with a credit card, you're supposed to pay it back. Right, 
I mean, and it's really about, again, what, the, what, what Psalm says, righteousness, mm -hmm. right? To be righteous is a man of his word, mm -hmm. or a woman of his word, someone who uh, has integrity. They say what they're going to do and they do it. They mean what they say and they say what they mean. They make a promise and they don't break it. Uh, they have honor, they have a code, and this, again, the credit is essentially a measure of that code. Mm. So if uh, it's normally, if you have a, a, a community and the average credit score is higher in that community, it's normally a more wealthy community because if, if you just measure by credit score, what it's saying is that this community has practices that says they pay back debt they uh, pay off things, they pay off loans, they're more responsible to paying it back on time, they have a good credit history. So all of these are practices that are not a 100% indication, but are somewhat of an indication of where and uh, how an individual is doing economically because they have the practices that usually should trans, trans, translate to better economic standing mm -hmm. in, in the community. And the reason I feel that the Credit score is one of the most important components of uh, financial literacy is when you want to talk about and introduce a term called gentrification, right? Many times individuals think that gentrification is more of a, a black thing or a minority thing. And gentrification is not necessarily a minority thing. It really is just about individuals who have a, a higher level of wealth are able to capitalize on depressed property values in an area. They're able to move in, and those individuals who are there, because uh, there are depressed property values, as individuals move in that have more of a means to pay more, property values start going back up, and those who are living there now can no longer afford to remain there, mm. so therefore they move away. That's so, kind of what happened in Harlem, isn't it? Exactly. It moved, it happened. Now, I mean, I was actually a, uh, because I was a professional who was making a little bit more money than average, when I moved to Brooklyn, so that's why it's not, it's, it's not a black thing, it's a green thing. Right. When I moved to Bro Brooklyn, I'm black. I moved into a predominantly black neighborhood, but the means and the economic means, I was slightly higher than the, than the, than the average. Mm -hmm. So I was able to afford that exorbitant rent of that little small little studio apartment that could mm -hmm. I could hardly spin a circle in without bumping <laughs> into myself, right? <laughs> so, I mean, but that's what gentrification is. So now, when you're talking about gentrification as it relates to credit, what does that mean? How, when, when someone who's living there, who's in that community, gent credit says, I have access to capital. And in this economy, when you're moving into a community that has depressed property values, where credit is not as prevalent as it was before, and in this economy now, banks are not lending as much as they once were before. Right. So really, there are only two individuals who are at better situation to be able to capitalize off of depressed property values. That is people with high levels of liquidity, meaning have cash in their pocket, have a lot of money, I can go in and I don't care about loans and whatnot. I can just buy a piece of property. And that's what a lot of investors are doing in cities like Detroit and uh, areas around the country that have depressed values. So people that have a lot of cash, investors go in and just buy up everything, or people that have good credit, because now they have access to capital. They can get loans so they can purchase pieces of property. So if you're living there and you don't have good credit, then you're one of the ones who's saying, if I'm renting, if you wanted to buy a piece of property, you couldn't, because you more than likely don't have the cash to do it, and you couldn't buy it because your credit's not good to do it. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna be left out, individuals are gonna be moving in with good credit and cash, and then they'll be purchasing property around you, and what's happened is you're gonna have to then leave because the rent's gonna get so high, it's gonna get well beyond your means to afford, and you don't own anything, so you can't control anything, and you're gonna have to move out. So literally, credit, is one of the central components to how our property values, and I, I mean how our, our communities are gonna re recover and whether or not they're gonna look like those individuals who are currently there versus individuals who can afford to move there and then price out individuals who are currently living there. And this is not a, and I mean, a lot of individuals will say, well, you know, uh, we should have more policy. This isn't related to policy. This isn't related to what the politicians are doing. This isn't related to, and there, and there are systemic issues, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to credit, this is m purely related based on our own habits, our own practices, 
what we do every single day, which is what makes me excited, which gives me faith that says we can make a difference by just changing how we operate and change. We have control over our own financial destinies by good credit. And I think I, I had to put that definition of gentrification as it relates in there because I know it's a big concern to a lot of people in many areas all across this country. Uh, and I think it's about that time that we start understanding where the solutions come from. It comes from within and that comes from laid out foundation from Christ. Absolutely. It, we can't we can't blame others. Right. One of the things that, that I've learned is that when the buck stops with me, mm -hmm. if I make a mistake, if I mess up, then it's my fault. Yet we're not discounting systemic issues, mm -hmm. institutionalized which racism. Are, which are we're there. Not, it, it's, it, those things are real. Yeah. But there, there's also personal responsibility. Yeah. And, when, and when you talk about the righteousness associated with this, you're mm -hmm. not talking about uh, it, it's right doing, it's the right disciplines, mm -hmm. it's the right habits. That's what we're talking about. So we don't want people to misunderstand when he said this is righteousness. We know that Christ is our righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's the righteousness of Christ over here. We're not talking about that. We're talking about right doing mm -hmm. and, and these disciplines and habits that have to come into play in order for us to have integrity. Right. Exactly. I mean, and the beautiful part about basing your life on the word is this level of righteousness comes from the word. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. teaches you that. That's right. It shows you the roadmap of, okay, if you want to be righteous, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. The wicked borrows but does not pay back. If you want to be wicked, borrow and then don't pay back. Mm -hmm. And you'll be measured according to the worldly standard, FICO, there's a credit, it measures the level of wickedness and it also measures the level of righteousness. Mm. But it also, it, indoc it, it indoctrinates the Deuteronomy inside the actual law. Mm -hmm. So this is not a, uh, and this is, this, is a, this is a case where this is not a, uh, this is close or this is something that's happenstance. No, this is the law. Right. This is the law of Christ that the world copied and made mm -hmm. it the law mm -hmm. of the land. Mm -hmm. And I think that we ought to just take heed that it has to be, I think they're doing something right in the Bible. Right. <laughs> to have people copying them and saying, we're going to make them law of the land. Absolutely. And so I, I choose to believe the law of Christ. Amen. So I, I wanted to just go over uh, some things of, again, uh, of, of, of the, how we break down credit. And one, what does it mean? We talked about the importance of it. How was it measured? Measured again, it's the FICO. FICO, the Fair Isaac Corporation, is a private corporation and they are they have a monopoly over uh, essentially how credit is being measured there are other measures out there called the vantage score mm -hmm. uh, but because the vantage score is not as uh, prevalent most lenders do not even use a vantage score mm -hmm. and the only point of having a credit score is to make sure you can get a loan or have uh, yourself evaluated by someone who can give you some capital and, and if it's not being used, advantage is not being used by the lenders, then it kind of makes it null and void as opposed to just maybe it can be ego boost to say have a bigger, bigger uh, uh, vantage score or what have you. Mm -hmm. So the vantage score, don't necessarily look at that, but the FICO score is very important. It's what, uh, and the FICO score as well as your credit report. Now, you have access to be able to go to annualcreditreport.com at least one, once a year for every, you have three credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Now, the way the system is set up is that there are local credit bureaus, many individuals don't know this, but there are local credit bureaus set up across the country. So whenever you pay your bill, many of your bill providers report to these local credit bureaus and these local credit bureaus and then turn around. And sometimes the bill providers report directly to the national credit bureaus. Mm. Uh, but many times they'll go to these local credit bureaus and then they report to the national credit bureaus. This is why when you go to Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian, most of the time you'll have different credit re reports or credit scores. Right. Because sometimes this bill provider or, or service provider did not report to that local credit bureau and it didn't get up to the national credit bureau. So that's why you have to check all three, not just one, but you get one free credit report per year from annual credit report. So I urge everyone to go out to annualcreditreport.com and get your free credit report every single year. 
and maybe even consider paying for the next one. But we have other good sources. Yeah, I, yeah. I was, um, I don't know where I found it, maybe on television or something, and mm -hmm. watched the commercial and right. I tried it. But Credit Karma, yeah. I, I, I use that. You can get your credit report mm -hmm. every day if you want it. Right. You can uh, see what your scores are with two of the agencies, mm -hmm. two of the um, credit agencies. And it's, it's amazing because I've watched my credit score get better. Mm. And it, was, it really wasn't good for various reasons. It mm -hmm. really wasn't good. But the Lord has really helped me to bring it up. And right. it's much better now. And I'm always, now I'm really concerned about it. So mm -hmm. I'm always looking on, right. on there, checking it, seeing where it is, seeing when it went down. Why did it go down? It tells you all of that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's just worth it. There was a time when um, things were, because I was self-employed, mm -hmm. things were just really low. Right. And it happens. Yeah. I, mean, I, I didn't pay some debt when I started Optimum Capital Management back in 2004. There's a couple of years I didn't pay off some debt. I take out of some, took out some credit cards and uh, had some hard times. Um, Did it, your credit score go down? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it was it was dismal. Mm -hmm. It was back and then I, it, I mean I, that was one of the days where I, I literally uh, I, I had 12 months living expenses, and I had to take out a credit card in order to cover the additional after that 12 months ran out. Um, I had a few clients. And things were slowly trickling in. Mm -hmm. I had faith in God. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when 2006 or seven, rather, I broke into Black Enterprise Magazine. That gave me a good marketing boost. And then CNN hit 2007 and 8. Mm -hmm. And then that's when things shot up and I pay off all my debt. Wow. But for, the, for those couple of years, it was, uh, you know, cheese nips and tuna fish. You yeah. Know? It, was, yeah. <laughs> it was hard times, man. It was. Uh, and and I, and I remember that. So just, you're absolutely right. Sometimes we we go through those times, and and, and everybody does. No one is above that, you know. Right, right. And th and there are times when, you know, the threat will be made. Well, we're going to report this to the credit yeah. agency. And some, I mean, if your credit rating is really low, it's like you know, do whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. But you really work against yourself, right? Because that credit is so important, that credit rating is so important, and you're gonna explain why. Absolutely, so there's a, the way it's broken down, and it's a fair as a corporation breaks it down, where 35% of your FICO score is your, the, essentially the record of you paying your bills on time. So your payment history. Yes, so as you pay your bill, and if they report to a credit bureau, now that does not always necessarily include like a rent bill. Now that it, it is though, more, more property managers are now starting to include or report rent payments so that individuals can now, and many banks, I remember uh, Carver Bank in New York, they had a, a system where they allowed individuals to have their rent payments reported mm. so that individuals paying rent can now start establishing a credit history, nice. which is a good service, it's a very good service. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, kudos to Deborah Wright for putting that all together, a uh, good friend of mine, but she, uh, so 35% is paying your bills on time. Mm -hmm. uh, so use automatic, automatic bill payment. I think it's key. That has been a lifesaver for me. Mm -hmm. A lifesaver. Because for me, I don't, I don't want to think about, okay, this bill is due on the 1st, this right. one's due on the 5th, this one's due on the 10th. You set it up one time. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it automatically gets paid. And that boosts your credit. If anything, it, it boosted my credit, my payment history, that has. There's a book called The Automatic Millionaire. It's mm -hmm. by David Bach. And I think it's a great book. And he talks about how many millionaires are made by just automating their savings. Mm -hmm. And when you automate your savings, it, it, and as a, as a financial advisor, I, I mean, I used to thank God for automated savings because it helped me work with clients to say this this puts you on this track where you don't have to think about it you can put money in your 401k your IRA and all of these savings accounts automatically right. and it became just boom and so now if you're doing that, as you said 35 percent of paying your bills on time your score starts to boost up over time right now 30 percent of your FICO score is your balance to your lending limit ratio okay so if you owe $5,000 and you can borrow up to $10,000, your balance to your lending limit ratio is 50%. Mm -hmm. You owe five, you can borrow 10, it's 50%. So 
So now, if you pay down some debt, okay, and you pay down $2,500 of that in that same scenario, your balance to your lending limit ratio goes from 5,000 to 10,000 to 2,500 to 10,000. So it goes from 50% down to 25%, mm. right? And your credit score goes up because as that balance to lending limit ratio decreases, your credit score increases. Mm. So paying down your bills is one of the fastest way that you can dispute or to, uh, to increase your credit score. Now, a lot of individuals will say, once I pay that $2,500 off, if you close an account, what happens is your balance to your lending limit ratio, let me follow the scenario again, it goes from 5,000 to 10,000, it was 50%. You paid off 2,500, it's 2,500 to 10,000, it's 25%. Now let's just say you cancel a $5,000 debt. It goes from 50% to 25%, and then you cancel $5,000 worth of a credit card debt. It goes from 2,500 to 5,000 your balance limit, limit ratio goes back up because you mm. canceled a credit card. Mm. When you cancel that credit card, essentially what the Fair Isaac Corporation is saying is that you have less uh, ability to take on risk. And it gets you coming and going. And this is, this is, the, this is the part that's almost unfair mm -hmm. because as you take out additional credit cards, then uh, uh, additional credit inquiries are 10% of your FICO score. So as you apply for additional credit cards, applying for debt, you're, and so if you're on an airplane or you're uh, in the mall and you see a, a special or a credit card special, when you apply for that credit card, your FICO score goes down five to six points right. automatically because they have to check. It's a hard check. They have to check to see if your credit is worthy of getting this additional loan, additional uh, ability to loan, and then now they're saying that you're taking on more risk so your credit score goes down. So when you take on more risk and apply for more, your credit score goes down. You cancel old, your credit score goes down because now you have the less ability to take on as much risk. So to get you coming and going, it really don't make a lot of sense. Yeah. But but that's just the rules, and that's how we have to. We that's the and have a monopoly. There's nothing else we can do. But if you pay it off. Yes. Yes. So the more you close your credit card, so, so does it does it pay then? To just keep a low balance on all of them? No. And I tell you, the reason it doesn't is because the way the Fair Isaac Corporation operates is that it operates month to month, right? They take a snapshot of what your, credits, of your, your credit amount is for the month of August. Then it's going to take a snapshot of what it is in September compared to August. So as you pay it down, what happens is your credit score goes up mm -hmm. because you're paying it down. So carrying a balance really doesn't have any additional uh, value because that month to month is the same. So if you had 2000 and you, and you carried it over to 2000 the next month and you just paid the minimum, then it's still the same. When they took that snapshot, it's not going to be any different. But mm -hmm. if you paid it down, it's going to go up. Though. Mm -hmm. So now I'll tell you, an annual, one of the fastest ways of uh, uh, getting your credit score to increase is making sure that 75% of all credit reports have errors on them. Mm. And this means you have a, a wrong name. It could be like your name was spelled wrong. You know, uh, you have a, a junior had a, a, a senior. If, if, if you have a, a, a father and you're a second or a third, more than likely there, there's probably an error on your credit report because they probably might have gotten mixed up between your father and you mm. in some form or another. And there's many, I mean, th these are just people at the end of the day putting information in. It's mostly automated, but there are individuals who insert a lot of information. So 75% have these errors. So go in and clean up these errors and by all means disputing uh, anything that you feel is wrong on those credit cards, on that, on that credit report is a very fast way because now they pass legislation that they now have 30 days to respond to that dispute. I actually like disputing uh, well, one way is disputing via letter. I've done a few letters. I mean, that's the old school way, but the easier way now to dispute, you can go right on annualcreditreport.com and pull up your Experian Equifax TransUnion report, and you can dispute right on the website right. and put an explanation, and it goes automatically. Now, one from that point, they have 30 days to remove that information. If they don't, then, uh, you, then that report is automatically removed. And if you dispute something, and now, again, I'm not saying don't pay because it says in Romans 
let no debt remain unpaid except for the debt to love one another. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I might be a, a strict uh, interpretation of, the, of what the law says, according to the, the Lord's law, you need to follow that. If you have debt, you got to pay it back. That's right. Uh, so you pay it back, and even though you can get it removed, still pay it back because you owe that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so that's that's what I've done whenever I've counseled my clients and uh, with Crown Financial Ministries. Um, so, but you still should know the law of exactly how to dispute items because there have been many items you might have an item for uh, uh, on there. So. The 15% of your FICO score is your length of credit history, and then 10% of your FICO score is the, the uh, uh, essentially the types of different types of debt on your account. So all those together, that makes up 100%. And so uh, very quickly, what I would say for those that are suffering from identity theft, and uh, I, I guess we can love to do a part two on this to do. Let's do a part two. Yeah, uh, seven steps to how to improve your credit, because yeah. I definitely wanted to get into that is dealing with identity theft, okay? And matter of fact, we can we can save that for part two as well. Ah, oh, let's do a little cliffhanger. Okay, well, definitely, we'll, <laughs> because there's a lot of individuals out there are suffering from identity theft. And, I mean, I've been a victim of it. Mm. And especially now that we are in an era of, uh, you know, you're using the uh, internet mm -hmm. at Starbucks, mm -hmm. and it's a public internet, individuals can break into your, uh, your domain and they can take all your personal information, that is becoming more and more prevalent now than ever before. Cyber theft. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. so that's becoming so easy now that individuals have, they can steal your uh, information by just walking by you and using madness to pull all your credit card information. That's right, that's right. Well, we, got, we have to do a part two. Absolutely, we'd all love right. to. And let's do a takeaway. All right. Great. Your credit score is your ticket to many things in your life. Whether you can buy a house, rent an apartment, the interest rate on your mortgage, your car payments, your insurance premiums, your ability to get business loans, all of these and more are impacted by your credit score. If you analyze many areas across the country with the highest levels of crime, substance abuse, and poverty, you will find all of these are negatively correlated with credit scores. The higher the credit score, the lower the crime, substance abuse, and poverty. The reason, simple. With good credit, you have access to capital, and we must demand access to capital to purchase homes, start businesses, and build wealth. So start today. There are too many free resources you can use which can help build your credit. We will be posting these resources continuously on the Data Dream Network Facebook page. Email me at dollars and cents at 3abn.org with any questions. As always, be the change, and remember the purpose of life is a life full of purpose. Be blessed. Thank you.